Only 10 teams remain in the championship chase, and two of the mightiest programs in college basketball are about to duel here in Syracuse with only one surviving to the Elite Eight, the Kentucky Wildcats, the fourth seed in the East, taking on the number one seed, the Maryland Terrapins, and the winner of this one will face UConn Sunday in the regional final, UConn eliminating Southern Illinois earlier tonight. And again, welcome back, friends. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Tayshawn Prince, such a big part of Kentucky's run through this tournament. 41-point performance last time out against Tulsa last week. He was sensational. He made six of eight threes, 41 points, nine rebounds, four assists, not a single turnover. First team All-American player without question. One of the most versatile players in college basketball. Another All-America on the floor tonight. Juan Dixon for Maryland. The ACC Player of the Year in the two NCAA tournament games. He's had 29 points each time. A prolific score and great on defense as well. Okay, Billy, we spoke with Gary Williams and Tubby Smith, the coaches, about this matchup in the Sweet 16. I think we've got to, you know, attack the basket because and and get good shots because when they are pressuring, you should be able to get some 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 good looks offensively. And we've got to take advantage of the mismatches when Tayshawn Prince has a mismatch inside. We've got to try to find him like we did against Tulsa. You know, I consider uh, defensive rebounding a big part of our defense because they, they rely on second shots. They're very athletic and they're big enough uh, to give us problems. Um, and then their transition, if you get Bogans or uh, somebody like Prince in the open court, they can do some damage. So we have to get back quickly against them. And the lineups here for Kentucky Prince, Hayes, a freshman, Kamara, Bogans, who could be a key and Hawkins, Mouton, Wilcox, Baxter, Dixon, and Blake for Maryland, a Final Four team of a year ago. And Bonnie Bernstein, a former University of Maryland gymnast, is with us tonight as well. Welcome, Bonnie. All right, we'll hear from Bonnie in just a short she's while. She's overcome with emotion as a Maryland <laughs> gymnast. You. She's tumbling. Jim, it's amazing these two programs. Uh, you, you almost saw a collision coming when those seeds came out on selection Sunday night. Kamara steals the tap. Wilcox not quite ready. We watched these two teams practice yesterday. I have never seen a team number one seed any looser than Maryland was. It'll be interesting to see if they're focused for this game. Packing way in. Kamara from the outside for Kentucky. That defense was packed inside 18 feet. All five players from Maryland almost inside the blue paint. That looseness you saw with Maryland at practice yesterday, did you like that? Well, you never know. You don't know how guys are going to react. Good job by Hayes on Wilcox. And Hawkins clears for Kentucky. Pull up jumper. And it's Wilcox at the other end for the Terps. Now there's something Gary Williams loves to see, and that is Wilcox aggressively going for the ball. When he is on top of his game, he rebounds a foot higher than anybody else in the game. Mouton short on the shot. He has struggled offensively in the first two rounds of the tournament. His last big game was against Florida State in the ACC tournament since that time, although the other night he did get on the boards. And also very, yes, very aggressive defensively. Hayes, three-point shot. There's and again, good position underneath for Maryland and Wilcox. Great hit ahead. Dixon. Looking for help, and Prince steals it away for Kentucky. Probably should have put that ball up on the glass because he had Baxter there for the follow-up. Fast and furious at the start on the line. Turnover. Turp ball. Gary Williams going absolutely crazy on that sideline. Not like he was acting at all yesterday where he was very relaxed with his ball club. Wanting them to get on the offensive glass, which has got to be the key for Maryland in this game. Gary Williams took his alma mater to its first ever Final Four last year in Minneapolis. In his 13th season on the Maryland bench, former captain back in 1967 as a point guard. Another turnover back to Kentucky. It, Bogans on Dixon. He's got strength on him. Maybe Dixon has the advantage quickness-wise. Well, we have the one here in the East, Maryland in action. The one in the Midwest, Kansas against Illinois. Coming your way, or for some of you here shortly on CBS, we'll get you to your tip on time. Two three-quarter court trap. Both ends with the three, and his shooting is something to pay very close attention to tonight. It really is. If you're Tubby Smith, you've got to like it against Valparaiso. He had 21 against Tulsa, 19. Really the key for this team offensively. 
Wilcox got free for the dunk. Hayes probably given up too much size to handle Wilcox inside. Hayes almost didn't see Mouton step in on him. Kentucky's a very deep team, so they're not going to get the press to get these guys fatigued. Tubby Smith can go 11 deep. Bogans again. Three point shot. Yes. These are huge, Jim. Keith Bogans coming into the NCAA tournament had made only two of his last 28 from three. He's two for two tonight at the start. And this six point Kentucky lead hands Maryland its largest deficit of the tournament. Blake with a two point shot. Jim talking about Bogans. He's had five 20 point games, and when he has 20, they all five are wins. Hawkins missing the lay in, cleared away by Baxter. Dangerous pass. Hawkins almost picked it off. This Blake and Hawkins matchup at the point, former teammates at Oak Hill, Hawkins and Blake. They were 31 and 0, in fact, the one year they were teammates. Best team in the nation. Well, Hawkins set all, all kinds of assist records there. You have two guys, you have Blake, number two assist man in the country, and those are two pretty good ball handlers on a high school team, wouldn't you say? Well, that is a strong backcourt. There's and Prince. Prince, first two of the night, coming there's, off the 41. There's his specialty and why he's so tough to match up against. He's got that little leaner on the inside used so effectively against Tulsa. Greg Gumbel in New York. We will update and revisit the action at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse for you throughout the evening. But right now, those of you headed for the Midwest, the tip-off is about to uh, come around in Madison, Illinois, and Kansas. Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafter. All right, Greg, thank you. Four-seeded Illinois Fighting Illini. They come in with a record of 26 wins and eight defeats. And the top-seeded Kansas Jayhawks, 31 and three, a wonderful year for the Kansas Jayhawks. And the winner of this game will take on Oregon Sunday afternoon in Madison. The Ducks advance with a thrilling 72-70 victory over the Texas Longhorns. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our second game, a game that will feature Frank Williams of Illinois, who has really been enigmatic in his play this year. And lately, he has stepped it up. He has a good feel for the game on all ends of the floor, understands what he has to do for this team now. Defensively, playing the passing lane, he's got length. His ability to find his teammate is terrific. He can knock down the deep one, which really makes him a difficult threat, but the ability to drive, draw, and finish is something he has in that arsenal of his. He's a tough out for Kansas to handle. Well, Bill has mentioned he has played well in postseason play. So also has Drew Gooden for the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, Drew Gooden can do so many things. He has developed the game facing the basket inside. This is where it starts. His ability to catch, shape up their high-low game. He's a guy that completely flashes, has a great understanding of when to give it up. But here is the expanse of his game. Put it on the floor and get to the 10, big fella. In his 14th season as the head coach in Lawrence, Roy Williams, eighth time. They have been to the Sweet 16. And his counterpart for Illinois in his second season as the head coach of the Fighting Illini, a 9-3 and three record in NCAA play. He advanced with Tulsa before he came to Champaign. Starting lineups for these two teams, and you'll hear some raucous noise in the background. These Wisconsin fans are going to be decidedly Illinois fans tonight. Robert Archibald, Brian Cook, Bradford, Lutherhead, and Frank Williams for the Illini. Drew Gooden, Nick Collison, Kirk Heinrich, Aaron Miles, and Jeff Boshi for the Kansas Jayhawks. Reason for this Madison uh, tilt toward the Illini is that Roy Williams, uh, they believe, disparaged the efforts of a Wisconsin team in the Final Four when it was 1917 at the half. Roy Williams said of his team, well, didn't you enjoy that more than 1917? Ooh. Well, he didn't like the physical play, and yet when they came out here yesterday for the hour's practice, there were some rumblings, but because they worked so hard when they left, it was an applause. People appreciated their effort. This an interesting rematch of the uh, regional semi last year in San Antonio when the roles were reversed and the Illini came in as the top seed. Kansas was seeded fourth. They played in San Antonio, and Illinois dominated in that game, 80 to 64. And the most dominant factor, Bill, was Frank Williams, who had 30 points. Big time game, and they've got to stop him. But you've got to think of the inside game of Kansas. They'll try and go at the big people for Illinois. Mike Kitts, Eddie Corbett, Mike Wood are our 
Officiating trio tonight. Archibald will jump it with Drew Gooden. Game two, the one seed against the four, and we are set to go. Controlled by Kansas, Aaron Miles. Illinois, minimum for Lundquist. Collison, guarded by Archibald, goes baseline. Kicks it back outside, Heinrich for three. You don't shoot with your ankle. Oh. He looked good to practice, overcoming that pain and difficulty. Terrific defender, important that he play big. That one tipped, traced down by Corey Bradford in the corner. Kirk Heinrich sustained a what seemed to be a very serious ankle injury late in the first half of the first round game against Holy Cross came back and got 15 against Stanford last week and this one is out of bounds it will be Kansas ball Aaron Miles has got the matchup with Frank Williams Roy told both of us yesterday he feels the quickness maybe the cover and do some damage on him that time they got a turnover Aaron Miles a freshman from Portland Oregon Here's Miles, number 11, picked up by another freshman, Luther Head, out of Chicago for the Illini. Both Back favor that three-guard look, Vern. Now here's Heinrich off the pick set by Collison. Off the mark, rebound, Brian Cook of Illinois. Here comes Illinois, Luther Head. He has started now the last 13 games. Very athletic, they get the little small change. Collison in the lane as Archibald was loading up. And what head gives them, I think, some excitement, some activity around the rim, and he can play bigger, and therefore they can have the three-guard look. First foul of the game called on Nick Collison, the junior from Iowa Falls, Iowa. And the ball inbounded by Frank Williams to Archibald. Now Williams picked up by Heinrich. Jumper, Bradford, rejected by Gooden. Here's Miles of Kansas, throws it right to head. No numbers, but Head kicks it right side, and the long jumper from Brian Cook. And wow, if he gets off the mark early, watch out. He can face it or do the damage down low. He has stepped his game up as well, but Bradford with a magnificent creation of the turnover. Tied at three as Cook equalizes the shot from the corner of Heinrich. Here's the entry pass and a battle with Robert Archibald. Now that's key that Archibald stay out of trouble, but here's the play that causes the turnover. They run out of room because Corey Bradford is so alert and head now with the ability to find off the dribble. And you mentioned the expansion of Brian Cook's name. Knockdown from deep. At 6'10", he can really hit that outside shot. And to the left side, here's Aaron Miles. Looks inside for Gooden. Back outside. Boshi. Guarded by Corey Bradford and a foul. A little cheapy. Call by Corey Bradford. And that's his first. Uh, that's one of those you don't like to have early. Uh, this is a little small change, a little McCrory's basement <laughs> here late in the evening. I know you got some of your ties there when you're uh, out. You're going to bring up Kresge's before it's all over. <laughs> the inside play, good with a nice screen to get to the block. Back it goes, Boshi for three. They love the outside game, in and out. Well, the three guys can penetrate and find people, but that time, the inside out. Look at Archibald and Collison. Gooden is running Brian Cook in the post. And here's Archibald, Collison. Back to Luther Head, Frank Williams. And Frank had Cook, disdained it. Pulls up, takes the three, not there. And Archibald is fouled as he comes down with the rebound. I think it might be two on Collison, Byrne. We'll see what they do. It is on Collison. And that's his second. See if Roy Williams makes a move. Uh, that changes everything. Roy upset. He's got to change the way he plays. Of course, they do have Simeon Kupalia uh, now coming in for Illinois, getting Archibald out. I think that's what you're going to have to do if you're Bill Self. Yo yo the big people. Because there'll be so many demands on the defensive end against this talented front line of KU. Well, the Scott sits, Paisley, Scotland, his hometown, and the kid from Sarajevo, Yugoslavia, is on the floor. Demir Kropalje. Here's Cook. This one won't fall. Collison stays on the floor with two fouls, but that may change momentarily. Kick it left side. Wayne Simeon getting ready to come in for Kansas. A nice job by Cook inside so far. Not giving Gooden the touches. Heinrich behind the back, kicks it outside. And Gooden can't control, but it is saved by Miles. Ten on the shot clock. Great trap. Five on the shot clock. 
Miles, good defense by Bradford, and he makes him pay anyway. How about the parties and the ability under pressure to make shots? Half point guard, only John Vaughn and Jeff Boshi have started as freshmen. You can see why Miles gets the opportunity. So essentially, three point guards on the floor, and a foul is going to be called on Jeff Boshi. That's his first. Simeon comes on the floor. Nick Collison, I'm sure, will head to the bench. And Vern, right now, I think both teams have to back it off just a little. They're a little overzealous. They're getting involved in sort of cheap fouls that are only going to hurt the progress of their game. So uh, be aggressive, but a little more intelligent. Frank Williams looks for Brian Cook. Simeon on him. Cook, jumper, in and out. Offensive board, Kripalia rejected by Cook. Get it out, big fella. Here comes Boshi for Kansas. Williams guarding him. Entry oh. pass taken away. Bradford for Illinois. Head leaks out, trips. Bradford has to come back and go to a half-court set. Frank Williams. Spin move, up. Not there. Tip, not there. Rebound, Gooden, and a foul on Kapoya. Boy, he's done a great job under the rim. Ends up fouling and a little upset with the officials, but he has been very active. And that's the physical play that he brings to the floor. And don't forget they got Luke Jackson to come in. Lucius, uh, Lucas, I should say, Johnson to come in. A very physical performer who really gets after it. If they got Luke Jackson, they got him from they, the Crories. I'll tell you what, they got a heck of a player. <laughs> they do indeed. But it's been a while ago. <laughs> 16 to go first half. Miles back to Heinrich. A fumble. Grapaglia chases it down. It's going to be a foul on Heinrich. That's what I'm talking about, Vern. You fumble it, you get back. I think everybody wants to get to the final four immediately. Just lay back a little bit. They are banging one another. Loose bodies after any loose ball. Take them home with you. Wisconsin, the 30-point win over Wisconsin, Billy, was the largest margin of victory in Maryland NCAA tournament history. Blake guns a three, long rebound, Baxter. The Bo Ryan's team just couldn't keep up with the offensive firepower of Maryland. Dixon from the deep corner, not hitting. Shot altered by Prince. They've missed their last seven, Maryland. Prince. Nice job by Holden. Cutting off that three-point attempt. Prince figures he can take him on a dribble. Steps back for the three, yes. And he's just too quick for Holden. Tayshon with five, and Kentucky's margin is five. Good job by the bench for Tubby Smith coming in here and building on the lead from the starters. Bounce pass in the lane. Nicholas, baseline shot, Dixon. There's a case where Fitch cannot afford to help out. When you're on Dixon, you've got to stay right with him almost from a face guarding standpoint. That's a travel. Basket by Dixon at the other end broke a three and a half minute drought for the Terps. He has eight, but Bogans has nine for Kentucky. Back in Madison, you heard Vern Lundquist mention how Kirk Heinrich went down against Holy Cross on his left ankle, came back 48 hours later to play against Stanford. Well, besides being tough, he's wearing this lightweight ankle brace. It's less than a year old. He says it allows him no rotation. Perfect for this physical game, Vern. Just a footnote. <laughs> Clever. Yes, very. Those BC grads. Good to have you with us, Leslie. <laughs> Seven fouls less uh, called in the first 408 of this game. So, uh, got to play within yourself. Don't get the small change. And Collison went to the bench for Kansas at 1630 with two fouls. Here's Frank Williams guarded by Miles. And the jumper, oh. no. One of nine shooting now, the Illini. And for that's where he's tough, manufacturing a post up. Heinrich to the rim. And. Uh, a foul is called as he penetrates. He is tough, as Les noted. I mean, his ability to come right back. Uh, electric stimulation is about all he had. Just a lot of effort, a lot of ice. Well, the training staff said no cortisone shots. No, nothing. We did not give him a shot. Well, I saw Mark Car Karens in Maui, and they had cramp problems. He is. 
Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in New York, Maryland, trailing Kentucky by three. Let's check out what's happening in Madison, where, oh, what's happening is the fighting Illini have come out with something a lot less than fight in them because they have just one lonely three-pointer to show for their efforts in the first part of this game. Well, they've missed eight of their first nine shots, and Kansas is now up by seven. Both teams really aggressive and physical already with 14 fouls each, but Kansas is doing a little better job getting good shots and knocking them down. We've said it more times than we care to when we've discussed this game, Clark, that Illinois guards have to excel in this game. Particularly Frank Williams, as you see Brian Cook going over the top for a putback to stop the cold spell for the Illini. Kansas is so good in transition, even after they give up a bucket, they'll push it ahead and really rush the ball down the floor. So Illinois has to do a good job getting back or get to the offensive glass so that they can negate Kansas' transition game. All right, Clark, we'll keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, let's get back to Syracuse, to the Carrier Dome. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Fitch steps in for a two. Rebound holding. Up ahead, Maryland looking for the lead, and they get it with new time. Jim, two outstanding defensive plays by Holden this game. He stepped out on Prince. That time he got out on Fitch. We're going to see Hawkins coming back into the game. Kentucky a little out of sync offensively. Fitch. Oh, clobbered by Nicholas. He did not release it, so it will not be on the shot. He could have got three fouls here if he had just let the ball go. When he saw Nicholas up in the air, it would have been a smart thing, Jim, just to release it to the basket. Bogans comes back along with Hawkins for Kentucky. Regular starting lineup with the exception of Estel in the game now for Kentucky. Let's see if Bogans can keep going on the hot hand he had early. Yep, Hayes returns as well. Maryland with six unanswered points here to take the one-point lead. Nicholas on Bogans. Bogans is a power player against him. Takes him down inside. He can make it work. Short on the three this time. Really good decision making out there by Steve Blake, the ACC's leader in assist and assist turnover ratio. Nation's leader in assist this year. Blake just edging out Ford from Texas. Oh, great fake. Blake fade away and Prince with the rebound. See, if you're guarding Blake, you would think that he's looking to pass rather than shoot. Of late, he'll fake you out by going for the shot. Bogans posting up on Nicholas. Blake, like, Blake like looking it. to help out. Bogans tips it, and it's Maryland ball. Following each game, log on and get updated tournament brackets at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. More subs coming in now as Dixon returns. Baxter back on the floor. One of the things that's interesting, Jim, both of these teams have quality depth. It's one thing that if you have guys that can go in and substitute, but they're maybe at all the same position. Both of these teams can substitute front court and back court and not really reduce the quality of their team much. Dixon short on the three. Estel's open. Hawkins thought about it. Now finds Bogans on the wing. Three-pointer. Hayes. Pump fake and connects. Good patience by Hayes. A freshman who's more of a athlete than he is a basketball player but he really has fit nicely into this lineup football star back in Modesto California in high school Wilcox he is fouled by Estel Chris Wilcox coming off a big game against Wisconsin Billy 18 points seven rebounds well Wilcox had his big coming out party on Maryland's win over Duke he was just awesome in that basketball game. Took it over inside. There was no matchup whatsoever that Duke had. He had 23 points, 11 rebounds. And in addition to that, to show his versatility, he went out and guarded Dunleavy. Coach Weber. Coach Weber of Southern Great. Illinois. Getting a nice uh, round of applause from his faithful. Looks like he's coming down to do a little uh, broadcast work. Wilcott, one of two. Hayes with the board. Yep. 
There's Bruce Weber. It's probably a little bit more comfortable than having to sit on that side and analyze that first game. Now we have Mouton on Bogans, a little better matchup. Nice back screen. And Estel just uh, with an errant pass. Maryland and Duke split during the regular season, and Kentucky and Duke had one of the real good games of the regular season up at the Meadowlands and went to overtime with Duke winning. Great show by Jason Williams to pull that out for Duke. Nicholas step back three. He can shoot. Well, yesterday from half court, he made six <laughs> shots. We were counting. Yep. We thought it was five, and he wanted to make sure we knew. No, no, I've made six. They tried to put the balls away, but as long as he kept making them, and they weren't in a row, fans, so don't think he can has that kind of range, but it's pretty impressive to make six shots from half court I at any time. I would say it was maybe six out of 15, maybe 40%. I'm talking right at the midcourt stripe. Hayes trying to back in the big body of Wilcox, yeah. and he draws the foul. Good job by Hayes. Made all rookie team in the SEC this year. Got Wilcox up in the air. You know, when you talk about all-time tournament wins, Billy, Kentucky with 89, then Carolina, UCLA, Duke is fourth, Kansas. Kentucky's 43rd appearance in the NCAA tournament. That's an all-time record as well. 13 Final Fours, seven national championships. Well, they are also the winningest team in the history of college basketball, period. Not just the NCAA tournament. 1,817 wins. You know, at one time, North Carolina passed them. And uh, now they have a nice working margin in North Carolina. And Kansas is pulling up... Uh, Right behind North Carolina is the number three team in all-time wins. Made up a considerable amount of ground this year. A lot of ground, yep. This has the makings of a great one here tonight at the Carrier Dome. 7.27 to go in the first half. Maryland, 24, Kentucky, 22. Smith, foul trouble. Heinrich and Collison, both. I see if they can get inside now because Illinois has done a great job on the post D. Jeff Boshi from long range for three. And Kansas back on top by four now. Corey Bradford with a little elbow thrown. Aaron Miles is back on the floor. Here's Johnson posting, or rather, uh, spotting up for the three. Long rebound. And Miles for Kansas. Collison. He's got better with the dribble. He may have walked there. That's Smith out on him. Here's Lankford. Nice move. This guy on the floor has gotten so much better. He's a slasher. I think he's a heck of an offensive rebounder. But you notice Collison outside drags the D and then gives the screen that permits the penetration. And here the lefty goes right. A little smooch early. And here's Brian Cook back on the floor now. A quick appearance for the seven-footer, Nick Smith. He goes over to the bench, and uh, Bill Self is going to chat with him. I think he didn't help on that particular right. play because you got to get over there, big guy. And, we got to uh, give other guys a broom to block it. You can do it with your hand. <laughs> Sean Harrington for the Illini. Boshi defending. There, he entry pass. Kropalia. Too strong. Well, they can't hit it from two point. They're hitting it from long range, and a foul on Illinois. Krapalia. Demir Kropalia. And that's his second. This is Kripalya missing 14 games in this his final season. Stress fracture of the foot. Guy with enormous promise when he uh, came here, spent three years in the Czech Republic, and then enrolled. I remember seeing him as a freshman and thought, boy, he's going to have a terrific career. He has, but it's been marred by injuries. Injuries, and he gets his money's worth on the fouls. Nice slip to the goal, pass a little too long, and maybe a tough angle. Yeah, one of the most successful college coaches there. He just grinds them out every year. Showed a lot of loyalty staying at KU. Surprised a lot of people, I might add. When, uh, people thought he was going to go to North Carolina, but had the loyalty to his team. Decided to hang yeah. tough, and they're delighted at Kansas. Nice denial. Grapalia back outside. Williams has yet to hit a shot. He's still 0 for, 0 for 6 in this occasion. Here's Miles for Kansas. Pulled up. Jumper too strong. Collison and Cook for Illinois on walk. the ground walk. Everybody's in a hurry right now. You get that feeling? It's rush hour. Just slow it a beat. And Bill Self feeling it was a foul that caused the walk. 
But I think just the energy at this level, because what is at stake? And I think halftime, you see a different pulse to the game when both coaches get a chance to chat. We're nearing the midway point of the first half. Kansas back on top by six. Collison guarded by Brian Cook. Johnson wants to come and help, and they throw it away, and that seven turnovers now for the Jayhawks. And you mentioned Johnson. He did a great job shading because Collison wanted to use, I'm sure, either either hand with the jump hook, but then on the kick out, unfortunately, one went one way. Now let's reset the lineups on the floor. Frank Williams yet to score, 0 for 7, guarded by Miles. He's got Cook, Johnson, Archibald. What a pass underneath from Cook. Off the glass, got his first. And a great call by Bill Self. Archibald with a wonderful screen, got him free. Miles back on top to Collison. Langford. There's that inside screen and the step up by Collison. This is Too strong off the glass. Archibald's there and he's fouled. Well, Langford with the reach in. But Archibald, the big body, by the way, that's a little process in the hair. I want to show you the research I do. But here, and then the curl to the goal, you can just see no help defensively. Simeon not able to loosen up, gets down. Unfortunately, it doesn't get the foul. But this is where you can get your guy on track. Get him a layup, get him to the free throw line. And right there, Frankie Williams, as you mentioned, playing great late in the season. Put this team on his shoulder, finally gets on track. At the line, Archibald. Following each game, log on and get updated tournament brackets at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online under keyword CBS Sportsline. So a little touch of frosting for Archibald. Well, Robert mentioned it was yeah. natural, and I gave the double look. I think he got his fingers done as well. <laughs> Uh, uh, sometimes we dispense way too much information. 9.20 to go, first half. 17.15. Good. Oh, oh, oh. Pick it up. A little lingerie on the deck. Oh, has he got great footsteps. What an improvement during the course of his career. Williams throws this one away. At the other end, Langford backs it back out. Ooh. Jumper, not there. Cook with a rebound for Illinois. That's five boards early going. And you know, Miles had done such a great job creating the turnover. The quick jack, I'm not so sure that's what Roy Williams wanted. Back it comes to Frank Williams. And loading up in the lane, but the good harassing outside doesn't prevent the entry. He uh, pitched the tent in the lane that time, but misses from short range. Miles, the runner got it off the glass. How about that? That creativity with the bounce. Defense unable to deter or contain, and Bill Self saw that breakdown. Wants to make a stop. 21-15 with 8.16 to go. Aaron Miles, the freshman at the point. Nice move. More from Whiteville, North Carolina. As Gary Williams told us last week, no limit to his upside. You can really see that, Billy. Number two shot blocker in the ACC this year. Third team all conference. But that really doesn't tell the full story of what this young man can and will be able to do. Two for two. Full court pressure now by Maryland. Hawkins breaks it with Fitch. Great job by Kentucky. Boy, and they almost could have had Carew setting up for a nice jump shot from the outside. That was really excellent offense against full court pressure. Carew, he's an outside shooter too. Baseliner spins out. Tipped out by Kamara into the arms of Dixon. Remember, Carruth had the great game against Duke where everything he was putting up, particularly in that first half, was going. Here's Prince to the hole. Prince lost control of it on the way up. It was fouled. It looks like... He doesn't play or blow his own back. I mean, Horn, he just is solid. Gets his foot 
nice step to the goal. And there, the only hand he could score with, the little switch gets carry on his back. And now a chance for a three-point play for Archibald. Three-point game, 21-18, Kansas at the 7.57 mark. In the NCAA National Championship game, Duke had three guys score 20 in that game, but it didn't make any difference because Jack Givens was just so pure. 78 title game it was. Randall back on the floor for Maryland. Lake oh. fade away. Not a good shot. Mouton fighting for it. On the arm is Kamara. Might be Karuf. Mouton getting some good offensive rebounds just as he did in the game against Wisconsin. They're going to call it on Caruth. Kamara and Prince have been dodging fouls on the inside. Could have gone either way there. And again, Tubby Smith, it's tough for his team to get into foul trouble because they just have so many weapons and are so deep. This year, they've only had five guys foul out of the game the entire season. Saw a shot of Tubby Smith, who was very nearly a Maryland Terrapin. He committed out of high school, out of Scotland, Maryland, to play for the University of Maryland. Fitch picks up the loose ball, sets up Prince. Open three, down and out. That's the shot Prince likes. Pretty nice rebound there by Randall. Thought Fitch had a chance to be aggressive and go for an easy lob on that last fast break opportunity against the press. Dixon, long range shot. Kamara clears. Kentucky might have some numbers here. Hawkins races up. Prince followed up by Kamara. Great running by Kentucky on that break. And right now, and right now, Maryland with Baxter on, out of the game doesn't have a low post presence. Finished that story. Tubby committed to Maryland. Then Lefty Drizel came in as a coach and elected not to sign him. Tubby went on to High Point College. 33-30 Maryland. First half. At the night. Well, what they do great is they pressure the pass to the post, and then their postman front, they assist one another. And you can see what's happened during the tournament. I mean, anything around 40 is sensational, but they're just beyond imagination. A little pressure, half court. <laughs> Miles, Boshi, Heinrich on the bench with three fouls. Collison resting now with three. So Gooden plays, Carey plays, and Lankford for Kansas. The jump, the catch, the shot is off the rim. Williams for Illinois. Luther head left side, and right ahead is Archibald, who is fouled by Carey and will shoot another free throw. Tell you what's interesting, Byrne. Gooden didn't get a look and was free at the one end. He did not run the floor as well as he should have. And look what happens. You cannot relax in college basketball. Archibald may not be able to outrun you, Vern Lundquist. And I know he can't outrun Drew Gooden. So that's one of those lapses that cost you. And of course, coaches sit there, he goes, get back in it. That's what you have to do. Archibald misses a chance for the first tie of the game. Here's Gooden at the top. Now the screen set by Lankford and Gooden guarded by Archibald. Backs in, goes baseline up and under. Brian Cook with the block, carry off the glass, and he goes to the line. What a valuable substitute he is. He just comes in, takes some minutes, does a solid job, understands what he needs. Seven minutes a game, not a big score. Graduated in May, but look at this, the step through, and you noted Cook's ability. And they just don't come up with it clean, Illinois. Great defense, but a little kiss by the big fella. And how about that? He knows they need him with Collison with foul problems. Of course, Heinrich as well, and Archibald with two. That's a major dilemma for Bill Self as well. So Robert Archibald on the bench, and Carey with a three-point play gives Kansas a four-point edge. 
Randall Clark Kellogg in New York, Maryland by three, just under three and a half to play. We'll bring you back after we check in to Madison, Wisconsin, where Illinois and Kansas are now separated by four points. And that margin goes down now to one. What makes this game fun is it's a rematch of a year ago. Exactly. Although the, the, the teams are the same, there's some new furniture in the house, though, for both of these teams when you look at their personnel. And right now, Kansas is having a tough time handling the ball. Turnovers have allowed Illinois to stay in it. And Nick Collison, a starting front quarter for Kansas, already has three fouls. Kirk Heinrich with three fouls in that game. We'll take you back now and rejoin the folks in Kentucky, Maryland. Kentucky in the blue inside with Kamara. He lost control of it. Back to Maryland. Jim, so often we'll see a big man try to go ahead and, and when he drops the ball, create a dribble off the, the drop. He's better off just getting with two hands, particularly under the basket like that. And even though Holden and Randall were in there, he might have been able to put it up and get fouled. It's been a tight one throughout. Maryland Another turnover. have a seven-point lead at one time. A three here to tie it. Prince almost fired it. Stolen away by Blake. Bounce pass that hit the back of the leg of Prince. Prince got hit in the eye as well, Jim. That was a great closeout that time by Mouton because Prince, who is so deadly with that three-point shot and a great pump fake, but he got hit on the eye in that play. Juan Dixon comes back. He has 11 for Maryland to lead the way. And we talked to Tubby Smith yesterday about Prince and that operation that they did to clean up his sinus problems so that he could breathe better keep himself in much better condition and since that time he has been quite a player at Kentucky. Well one magnificent career college career will end here tonight. Will it be Prince or Dixon or Baxter Both or Baxter all Americas and Nicholas hits the two point shot. Boy. Oh and a pass. Where was that going? Well, Hawkins spotted Prince, who really released on that jump shot. But when you're down five points, Jim, you don't want to early in this in this first half here, or late in this first half, you do not want to go ahead and try to go for home run passes like that. They need to be more solid. Kentucky's turned it over now. It's last three possessions, trailing by five. Well, both teams playing aggressive defense, particularly on the ball, so there are going to be some turnovers. Dixon posting up on Fitch inside. Holden's a good outside shooter, so on the skip pass, you got to respect him. Dixon blocked by Fitch. Over to Nicholas with a three. Oh, he thought he made it. Well, he really didn't have that ball seated in his hands very well, but I think he shot. I thought the shot clock was going to work against him. That was some block by Fitch down inside, who is an outstanding defender. When Prince was open, unable to connect on the pass from Kamara. How about that smart move by Dixon? He turned around to see where Prince was, so he didn't have a chance to come from behind him with a steal. Holden. And last touch by Maryland. Coming up singular at the half with Greg and Clark in our studio in New York and a look in at Illinois and Kansas from the Midwest action, Madison, Wisconsin. Tim Hayes that time with that steal and block as a man is releasing, getting him down on the waist before he gets the ball up in shooting position. Hawkins, Dish, Kamara, and Randall. Randall called on the foul. We've been enjoying the Skycam pictures from our Pontiac Vibe Cam here tonight at the Carrier Dome. Kamara, who sat out last year, Jim, as you can remember, and has come back and, uh, and played extremely well. This year, Tubby Smith has had some revolving door with suspensions and problems and guys leaving the program and Jason Parker hurting the knee and Marvin a, Stone transferring yep. to Louisville. But it has been an amazing job. And you know, uh, Tubby talked the other day about his different composure on the sideline. And I have to say that, that it's really true watching him here. Uh, in the last couple of weeks much more relaxed and composed and he said this group of athletes seem to respond to that better but with all the injuries and 
transfers and distractions. This is still a team that has as good a depth as anyone in the NCAA field remaining. Ten players can really contribute, can start for you on any given night. Under a minute to play in the first half. Maryland leads at 35-31. Kentucky doing a real good job down and low. Look at Holden trying to get something off, but doing a real good job preventing Dixon from coming off those screens down on the baseline. Fighting through nicely is Kentucky. Hayes on the foul. Holden to the line. Taj Holden. Like Wilcox, you watch those two in a shoot around in a practice. They have tremendous outside shooting abilities. They really do. And Holden really has done a nice job in regard to his conditioning as well. I think both of these teams, and I remember when Joe B. Hall at Kentucky was really the first guy that I know of back in the early 70s that started working on conditioning and weightlifting programs. And without question, Kentucky was ahead of everybody in the country in regard to team conditioning. Now everybody does it. But nobody did it any better than Joe B. Hall did at Kentucky. Beautiful pass. Underneath Kamara put it on the floor once, still able to dunk it home. We've got a two-second differential on the clocks. Maryland calls time. The Terps 28 and 4 on the year. Undefeated at home. Leading here by four. Let's go the other way. This should be Johnson. That's where he spent his career, on the floor or in press row, somebody's lap. He is a physical performer, uh, but here the ability to find people, you can just see they don't get out and cook. They defensively don't communicate, don't really get a guy out. And this is just a good screen again by Simeon and a little jumper, rather easy for Miles who's played great defense, I think, challenging. Number one seed Maryland leads at 37 33 and since the seeding process began back in 1979 how have the number one seeds fared well 12 national champions were coming out of a number one seeding 39 final four appearances only one year Billy three out of four only one year though did not a single number one make the final four and that was 1980. Well, we have two left now, Kansas and Maryland. We remember when Kansas was the only non-number one that made the Final Four when Kentucky, Michigan, and North Carolina got there in 93. Trying to hold it for the last shot. One second differential here, so Maryland doesn't have to be in any rush, but Blake has to watch five seconds here. Is it to Wilcox in the lane and the dunk with four seconds to go. Gary Williams wants a pick up full court. There is the shot from half court and almost makes it. Maryland to the locker room with a six-point lead. Good recognition by Wilcox on that bounce pass to take it all the way to the hole. Good nope. half of basketball, Billy. Very good. Two outstanding teams. Let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? All right, Jim. Well, customarily, Maryland's a team that likes to pound it inside early. Not a lot of points from Wilcox and Baxter so far, though, Gary. What do you try to do in the second half? We weren't patient enough, really. When we were patient and got the ball inside, I thought we were okay, but we were really quick shooting the ball tonight, and hopefully we can get it back at halftime and really grind it inside. Coach, thanks. Thank you, Bonnie. Dixon's 11 leads the way. Maryland 39, Kentucky 33. And CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four will continue with Greg and Clark in a moment. Now, Kripal, you with the screen out high. Williams, Johnson. Good wow, one. way outside. Not a good one. Too deep. Goodness. His feet were cold. <laughs> Back it goes. Simeon takes it right, takes the jumper, and gets it. What a lift. Now that's two big plays. He screened the guy off Miles to get to the rim. Three big plays and solid defense. What a contribution down the stretch. Wayne Simeon, another McDonald's All-American, Roy Williams. First saw him play at a camp when he was in the sixth grade. Oh. Here's Johnson off the glass, and he'll go to the free throw line. Roy Williams recruits them. He doesn't eat them. He's not a McDonald's guy. He likes the tenderloins. Because <laughs> when you're successful, Neil Darty, longtime assistant alongside of him, you can go to the fine dining place, but Johnson doing the right thing. He's not a great deep shooter. Put it on the floor. Now they're just discussing matchups, who to get in, who to get out with foul problems.
Coming up on singular at the half, Greg Gumble, Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, plus a live look at Kentucky, Maryland. That's all coming up on singular at the half. Brett Ballard has come on for Jeff Boshi now for Kansas. And Bradford is back for Illinois as uh, Brian Cook. Here's Ballard, number three. And Johnson shoots one more. And this is all about stealing time by Roy Williams. He's just trying to stay alive with his foul problems, and they're doing more than that. Illinois not able to pull ahead with the dilemma. Johnson missing two at the free throw line. Now Ballard, Miles. Simeon and Kapalia takes it away. What a great read. Good anticipation. Read the pass, went for it, got it. Here's Williams. Two threes. There's a strong pick from Kropalia. Here. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to Singular at the Half at our studios here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg, our score at the break. Maryland leading Kentucky by a score of 39 to 33. What about this game? Well, the Stars have come out and played well in the first half on both sides of the ball. You see Prince with 10 and Juan Dixon with 11. Maryland, after a slow start, able to get it going and pound it inside. And I think that's where they're going to continue to try to attack Kentucky by going in the paint. All right, Clark. In Madison, Illinois and Kansas are winding down the first half. Two minutes and change to play. Let's get you out there and join Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafter. Gooden shoots one more free throw. A five-point Kansas lead. Trying to get to the halftime break. Ballard is out. They've got Kirk Heinrich and Nick Collison on the bench. Three fouls each to the Jayhawks. And Gooden at the line shooting his second. Gives the Jayhawks six unanswered. They've broken a 32 all tie with 2.01 to go before halftime. Back in Madison, if you kept a camera isolated on Roy Williams, you'd notice something unusual. He never looks at the scoreboard in the first half. He told me he cares about how his team is playing. That should tell him the score. When I asked him, are you tempted? He said, of course I am. It's a discipline, the way I want my team to be. Vern, if he happens to look over, would you tell him they're up by six? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell him they've got foul problems too, Leslie. Uh, Les, I didn't like to look at the end of games. <laughs> With good reason, I might add. Not the success of Roy Williams. Bill Raftery, longtime coach at Seton Hall, and he gives lie to that. It's a great banquet presentation. Thank Let you me tell much. you, he had a winning record at Seton Hall. Roll, what a discard. He got away with it. And a tough muscle-up shot. Simeon clears it for Kansas. And nice. Kripalia from behind. Here's Williams at the other end. This will be an easy two. Kripalia has given them terrific effort. He's been involved in so many plays that don't show with a box score. Great reaction. I saw him go down with a stress fracture, and it was a re-injury against Michigan State, a loss at home, and I think we thought his career was over that day. Isn't that great to see him back here? Because the points over the turnover, he's led to that, and he's a plugger. He and Johnson wanted to finish with this group. There's a skip pass. Gooden has it, backs out. Eight on the shot clock, 50 to play in the first half. Simeon wanted it, the jump stop, it's taken away, and touch last by Illinois. Now the matchup had them a little confused, but if they're patient and reverse the ball, and I don't know, I'm not so sure Roy is insane, the short corner, because if they drive the gap, they've gotten the ability free in the corner with three on the shot clock. And the inbound play out of the up. Just didn't squeeze it out. No. About a six-second differential game clock, shot clock. And a four-point margin. Here's Head. Not there. I'm not so sure that's what they wanted. Early. I don't think so. And, and Bradford had a mismatch with Gooden. They should have taken advantage of it. Triple drive on him. Illinois hitting less than 35% from the field in the first half. Now, there's a matchup. If they take a good shot, they may get an offensive rebound. Because you don't have proper checkout responsibilities. Well, with Collison playing six minutes and Heinrich playing eight minutes, somehow Kansas might get to the break with a lead. They will. Here's the spin move. Miles puts it up. It counts. 
and Roy is charged up, and why not? But there's miles to go before they sleep, huh? How about that individual play on the foul line? Oh, I did not know I was working with Robert Frost. <laughs> That little poem at the end here, but boy, what effort. Actually took a little bit of a hit, Fern, and still able to hit the feet set and finish that shot. A little nylon in. How about this? The mentor. We pump. are going through the woods on a snowy evening, but right now we're going to stop with Leslie Visser. Vern, he is fired up, and coach, you're in foul trouble, but you had balance scoring. What should we look for? Well, we didn't play very well. We were lucky with some of the baskets. We got a lucky basket there at the end, but we weathered a little bit of the storm. We do have some foul trouble, and they were silly fouls, so we can't have that. Uh, we know how Illinois can come back quickly, so we've got to play and play 20 minutes like we played better than we did that time. Thank you, Coach. Back to you, Vern. All right, Leslie, thank you. That's the end of the first half. Miles with the jumper at the buzzer. Greg Gumbel back with singular at the have after this message. All right, Vern, thanks. So Kansas with a 40 to 34 lead at the break. Earlier today in Madison, Oregon knocked off Texas by a half a timeout, and then we'll send you back to Syracuse for the second half of Kentucky, Maryland after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Sports.